going to go over the basic initial setup of a Pro Series filler. When you would receive this machine, you would want to start by getting the machine removed from all of the crating, uh, get all the components in one general location where you're wanting the machine to end up. You're going to start by bringing your conveyor into place uh, exactly where you would want it to be. You're going to set the conveyor to the line height measured from the floor to the top of the conveyor chain. Once you get the line height set where you want it all the way across, then you're going to level this thing from front to back and left to right. Make sure you got as level as possible. That's going to be your first building block for the rest of the machine. After that, you're going to want to make sure that you set your railing in place and start from left to right. You're going to adjust that for the width of the container that you're wishing to run. Make sure that that slide, a container will slide nicely all the way down from left to right. No binding or uh, unnecessary friction. Once you get that set, you're going to take and mount your indexing system, this bar here. You get that thing, you'll have a couple of holes already drilled for that on the two ends. You get that mounted with your pins and your infeed count in place. Once you have that thing mounted, then you're going to want to pull your filler over into place, get that aligned up. It should generally will align up the end of your fill bar with the exit end of the indexing system. And then you should have additional length beforehand. But once you line those two up, then you should see there'll be a couple of mounting holes on the back. You don't want to put those bolts in yet, but that'll get you into the general location. Once you get that in the general location, then you're going to want to level your filler out, but you're going to want to level off of this fill bar here. So you're going to level from left to right and front to back off of the fill bar. So your fill heads are sitting in the proper location. Once you get that all in the proper location and your height looks good, you should be just underneath the edge of the conveyor generally. Um, some setups are a little bit different, but then you can go ahead and attach your brackets holding your filler to your conveyor. They're usually on the back side here on both sides. Once you get that done, you're going to want to go ahead and reconnect any disconnected airlines or electrical cables uh, that were disconnected for shipping purposes. It's going to be like this in-feed count sensor, uh, the airlines for your entry pin and exit pin, the electrical connection from the filler to your conveyor motor, the, sometimes you'll have an airline that will run down to a product supply pump if we supplied you with one. Uh, get all that stuff reconnected. Uh, and any components that were removed as well, you'll want to get reconnected. So a lot of times we would have removed this tank for shipping purposes. So you'll go ahead and drop that back in place. Usually four bolts that are holding that in. Reconnect the uh Product supply hose, if that was disconnected, get all your fill head hoses reconnected if those were disconnected. Once you get that done, then you're going to want to go ahead and connect your product supply system. A uh, general one would be if you're filling from an IBC tote, and your facility would be going into, say, an AOD pump, which would then run from the tote to the AOD pump, out of the AOD pump, into the bottom of the product supply valve here. Once you get all that connected, if you are running an AOD pump, then there's going to be a signal wire that you're going to have to connect or a signal airline you'll have to connect. So make sure you get that in place. Once you get that done, then you can go ahead and you can connect the main power cord on our typical gravity filler. It's going to be a 110 household plug. And then you're going to have a standard quarter inch quick connect airline on the product supply valve on the back of the frame or not product supply on the air supply valve on the back of the frame. Once you get all that connected, then you're going to want to go ahead and set your overall height on the standard system. It's a jack on the back here. You'll crank this handle. That'll raise and lower your fill heads. You'll get those to the appropriate height so that they clear the containers you're wanting to run. So they'll slide nicely right underneath. 
if you have any accessories like this one has a nozzle bar mounted drip tray make sure you allow yourself a little bit of clearance for that thing to move in and out once you get that done you're going to want to go ahead and set your indexing pins so you want to set your exit pin and your entry pin uh, in a standard scenario, you'd want to try and keep the containers you're filling as even as possible uh, to the center of the fill head or fill bar. It just keeps things moving nicely. Things aren't weighted all off to one side and cosmetically looks a lot better. Some scenarios you're going to have to do what's called an every other fill. So this style is doing an every other fill because of the size of the nozzle compared to the size of the container. So you can see the entry pin is centered on this one. Exit pin's over here because we're filling on both sides of the entry pin, which isn't standard. Standard, this entry pin would have been down here, exit pin down here, and you're just filling all of these into the individual containers. Once you get you can, your pin set, then you'll want to take your in-feed count sensor and you'll want to mount that to where you're reading on the neck of a container so that you'll get read a gap in between each container as that passes by. After you get that all in place, then you can go ahead and you can set your fill head spacing so that your fill heads will hit every container you're wanting them to hit. After that, you'll wanna go ahead and turn your product supply valve on via the button on your HMI. That'll allow your product supply to kick on and start to fill your tank. You wanna wait until that tank is completely filled and the bottom float, which is your main float, pushes up, and that'll shut your product supply valve and pump off. Once you get that done, then you'll want to go ahead and run your fill ASUs in your touchscreen. We have a separate video going step by step on that for each different style of machine. But you'll run each individual fill ASU, and you'll be able to determine whether or not you need to close these metering valves or not these little handles you can close those the farther you have them closed the slower the product will flow out which will help with foaming or splashing out of the container so you can make that call as you're doing your ASU do that all across the board once you're done with that then you want to bring your containers back empty containers up to your entry pin and then you will want to run your ASU for your index timing we have a separate video running for that, but essentially you'll start the ASU, it'll pull the containers from here to here, and it'll give you a set time. You can go ahead and save that. Once you got that saved, you can clear the containers out from in between your gates, and then you're ready to run a test cycle.